Chers auditeurs, Dear listeners, bonjour. Welcome in Comme d'Archi Podcast Season 3. Saison 3 dans le monde fascinant des architectes. And in the architectural projects. Je suis Anne-Charlotte de Ponte, passionnée d'architecture et docteur des universités en histoire de l'archi. I am one of the spokespersons of Anne Charlotte, who is a PhD in architecture history. Merci. Thank you. D'être avec moi aujourd'hui. To be with us today. Et and maintenant, now, lundi en français, place au talent. And Wednesday, let's talk projects. In English, of course. Bienvenue dans Comme d'Archi. Dear listeners, good morning. This is Esther on behalf of Anne Charlotte. It's good to meet you again in season 3 of Comme d'Archi, episode 49, with a text by Anne Françoise Jumeau, architect. It is about her project, the Atrium for l'Université Pierre et Marie Curie, Paris 6, on the Jussieu campus. It is an architecture by Anne-Françoise Jumeau, architect and peripheric architect. One in 2002 delivered in 2006, a dazzling achievement. This is the operation that enabled the agency to emerge from its beginner status. It is a new building, an extension of the Edouard Albert Grill. There are teaching rooms and practical exercises, lab rooms for the 10 science degree departments, organized around an atrium treated as a vertical campus, a micro-urbanity, interior squares, bridge buildings, a Pyrenean space that allows students to meet. The notion of serendipity reappears strongly at this time, and workplaces are decompartmentalized. Work is envisioned in shared spaces so that the ideas circulate naturally. A choice of colors allows the 3,200 students to find their way around the space of this undergraduate campus and, at night, to spread outwards like a colored beacon through the entirely glazed facades, which are nevertheless protected by perforated panels in anodized aluminum, which also allow framing of the surrounding environment. This new atrium building, which is an extension of the grille d'Edouard Albert, responds to this paradox preserving, respecting and continuing the existing constructive system, while proposing a fluid relationship between the Jussieu Slab and the Quai Saint-Bernard Esplanade. The aim was to enhance and connect this fabulous university site in the centre of Paris with the Seine, the Sorbonne and the Jardin des Plantes. It was to be a place of work, pleasure and urbanity for all users. The topographical device adopted consisted in gently folding the floor of the Jussieu slab under the new building to reach the Quai Saint-Bernard naturally and to set up there, directly accessible to students and teachers, the campus reception and animation areas. This large open hall, a real urban lodge and protected square, is accessible to pedestrians from the entrance on the southeast side of the Jardin des Plantes, as well as in its northeast part towards the future garden. In the interest of architectural continuity, the whole of the building is supported on the waiting gables. It is also strictly regulated on the existing floors, the ceiling unifying the rhythm of the Jussieu slab, and is connected in elevation on the clear line of division between the Albert building and the sky. The principle of the constructive grid that regulates the Albert building is repeated on the façade of our building. This unifying envelope is made up of eight vertical panels, slab to slab, micro-perforated in anodized aluminum sheet, composed randomly, depending on the orientation and the different interior spaces, of more or less large perforations, forming a sensitive, thick and sun-breaking skin. These panels are supported by a maintenance corridor positioned in front of a one and a half meter long glass facade. From the interior of the rooms and its glazed facade, the filter effect provides a very clear view of the exterior while providing a view of visual and solar protection. Large urban windows throughout the building allow in places to reveal the depth of the building and to discover a patio loggia dug into its thickness up to the central atrium, or to reveal the glazed facade of certain interior spaces. The implementation and construction techniques used to create this building are low-tech, using standard commercial profiles and industrial mass production. Indeed, the use of basic materials, concrete, metal and glass, gives a powerful, simple and solid aesthetic that we are interested in manipulating to make it somehow sophisticated. 
Behind this open work and dematerialized facade, a sensitive dimension of the architecture, a spectacular central covered atrium develops throughout the height of the building, which organizes and distributes the entire program. This vast central space, the pedagogical heart, is bordered on each level by horizontal, wide corridors and vertical circulations, staircases, escalators and lifts. The circulations distribute the various teaching rooms. On some levels, one-story-high truss structures cross the void and form inhabited bridges linking one side of the atrium to the other. Along the horizontal circulations, a thick surface strip is reserved for the insulation of networks, ducts, storage, etc., but also acts as a sound buffer. The circulation is separated from the void of the atrium by a brutalist interior facade in mirror-finished concrete, pierced by numerous bays that provide different views of the heart of the building. The organization of this educational center around a large central void, a real square and a vertical campus, offers users a global vision to orientate themselves and visualize the different areas of teaching, reinforced by a color scheme corresponding to the different teaching areas. At a glance, one is able to know where the next lesson will take place. Widely linked by vertical circulations leading to plazas positioned at the interfaces of the programmatic units, the corridors irrigate the classrooms. These all take in natural light and form generously proportioned spaces with a serene atmosphere. The whole program is developed on eight superstructure levels, including an intermediate level, the administration. The first two levels of the building, Quai Saint-Bernard and Jussieu, house the reception, leaving, meeting and animation spaces of the establishment, as well as the elements of the program which do not exclusively concern the undergraduate cycle and which must remain easily accessible to the whole campus, library, organic computing. The administration offices and the copy shop are directly at the heart of the building, taking in natural light and are accessible from the hall. The teaching rooms, mainly for undergraduate students, are on the five upper levels. They are classrooms, computer rooms, laboratories, etc. Finally, the base contains the large examination room, the thesis room and part of the building's technical premises, the others being distributed on the roof. Under the slopes of the base are the library spaces, animated by the movements of the ceiling and the large planted patio that brings in subdued light. The programmatic units are grouped on each level by subject. Physics floor, chemistry floor, computer and multimedia floor, etc. For practical reasons, the common rooms are distributed throughout the levels, near the vertical circulations and the sanitary blocks, and can be easily shared. The treatment of the circulation is of paramount importance in this project. There are no blind corridors, no dead ends, or endless, poorly lit corridors. The corridors are bathed in light and open up to a variety of views. They allow for multiple routes through the building while meeting the constraints of sectorization imposed by the program. Better circulation of people certainly means better circulation of ideas and knowledge. Dear listeners, thank you for tuning in. Let's meet again next week for a new Kamdashi in English. And until then, take care of yourselves. Goodbye. Thank you for listening. Thanks to Julien Robourg, sound engineer, who is collaborating with us today. Don't forget to tune in to our previews on Instagram at Comdarchi Podcast. If you enjoy this podcast, don't hesitate to promote it by giving it five stars and a little comment on Apple Podcast or on your favorite podcast platform. And above all, subscribe to listen to all of our episodes for free. See you soon. And until then, take care of yourself.